compared to the blue area of the moon. An area that, for some reason, you can breathe without a spacesuit. Nearly kills everyone around her just by yelling stop, while Tony Stark builds a magical transformer to attack the Phoenix. There you go, Marvel's out of ideas. There's only one scene with the gun, no one actually gets shot. Rebooted into a more uh, grimy character with the new 52. Welcome back to Comic Pal. I'd like to continue my Avengers vs. X-Men Consequences series and look at issue number three. Once again, Kieran Gillen is the writer, but this time around, Scott Eaton is on pencils. He does a great job with the art and um, I think <coughs> really continues um, um, along the same pattern as the previous guy. Um, it appears that they're going to do just as they did with Schism and they're going to have a different artist for each issue. Um, which should make for a pretty interesting collected edition, but otherwise, no big deal. So, when I first saw the cover to Avengers vs. X-Men uh, Consequences number 3, and it had Iron Man on the cover, I was afraid that they were not going to focus on the X-Men. And after we left um, issue number 2 with Cyclops and the other mutant about to get shivved, I thought that that would be a real tragedy, that they would just leave us hanging like that. Well, it turns out that you don't have to worry about that. After a small section in the beginning with um, the two irons of um, Avengers, Iron Man and Iron Fist, um, talking in Kunlun, it goes right back to Scott and the other mutant in jail. Now, um, I'm going to have some spoilers in this review, um, as I've had for the past two. Um, let me just say once again that if you really like the X-Men, um, you should definitely get this issue. And um, if you enjoyed Avengers vs. X-Men, you should probably also get this issue. If you don't care about the X-Men, if you're just an Avengers guy, or um, you're like, what was this Avengers vs. X-Men thing? Should I check it out? Nah, don't get this book. You're going to be bored. Um, Kieran continues to put a cap on his run on X-Men, and so this book is continues to mostly develop Scott's character. <coughs> if there's one flaw that this issue has, it's that Scott, um, after in the last issue, wanting to be a martyr and be killed both by Wolverine and by... Um, the three thugs that are coming to kill him in jail, decides that, no, he's going to retaliate and he's going to survive. I know that they had to do that for storytelling reasons, but it just um, strikes really weird, a really weird tone, because at one moment Scott wants to die, the next moment he doesn't. Now, uh, I would say, first of all, you know, I've never been uh, suicidal, so maybe that happens to a lot of people. They, they think they want to die until the last minute and they realize, no, actually I want to live. Or, you know, maybe he's just in a really weird emotional state where he's not sure exactly what he wants, whether he wants to um, continue to live or whether he wants to um, die. You know, he may be flip-flopping back and forth. He may just be having some psychological issues right now due to the fact that, um, you know, as Kieran continues to develop here, he continues to um, be happy of what he did. It led to more mutant births, but sad as he um, speaks to the other mutant about his time at... Um, at Professor Xavier's School for the Gifted, he speaks of it fondly, and he speaks of Xavier fondly as well. So, um, he he definitely, you know, um, I think Kieran continues to do a good job. Some people in the comments have, um, to the last couple issues, have said um, that they were um, not a big fan of what they were doing to the X-Men and Cyclops. And um, I think that they have some you know, slightly valid um, complaints, you know, someone had to be the bad guy, and, and it sucks when, when they pick the team that you wanted to root for. Um, however, um, as I as I replied in the comments, uh, first of all, um, this is something that Kieran's been building up to with Scott. Um, it's been a long time coming. Um, he's been uh, getting more and more radical as time has gone by. And I think um, Gillen continues to do justice to um, Scott's character. He's not here in jail suddenly, you know, mwahaha, some caricature of a villain, um, you know, like, yes, what I did was right, and who cares if I had to kill people along the way. No, he continues to have normal human complexity, or as much as um, you can convey in the comic book medium, you know. He is very happy that there are new mutants, but he's very sad that he killed someone, that he had destruction, that um, because of him, uh, four other uh, X-Men are on the run, you know, the other uh, members of the Phoenix Five. So I think, I think Gillian does a good job. I think that he really, um, he really continues to portray Scott as realistically as a, a fictional character can be portrayed. 
you know, and one that has a story to move forward. Now, um, I think it's possible that, um, you know, so Scott is, uh, as, as we move on, you see that he sees himself as a political prisoner in the same way as Nelson Mandela or, <coughs> excuse me, Nelson Mandela or Gandhi, you know. So um, how does this lead to um, all new X-Men, which is now replacing Uncanny X-Men? Uh, we're left unclear, you know. Um, maybe he does go full-on villain. Um, you know, um, as I said um, before, uh, Marvel, they tend to have a really good continuity. It's what I like about Marvel over DC. Um, you know, M-Day lasted for six, somewhere between six and ten years. Um, Jean Grey's been dead for about a decade. I mean, Marvel, sometimes, you know, they bring people back right away. Johnny Storm, um, Professor X when he died before, um, during, um, you know, when Hope was first born. But, you know, in general... Uh, Marvel tends to have a continuity that lasts. It's what I like about Marvel over DC. It's why I'm subscribed to a lot more Marvel books than DC books. Um, they tend to continue moving stories forward. You know, Marvel now is not another reboot. It's just a shuffling of the creative teams. Um, but, again, it's hard to tell because Gillen is putting an end cap on his um, Cyclops character. And then Bendis is taking over as the lead writer for X-Men. So... Does he have a different direction for Cyclops, or is it a unified direction from where Gillen is coming from? And um, frankly, I've taken the the same, you know, more or less the same view as my brother, which is that whoever is the lead writer and has a run, as long as they're having a long run on a comic, not just a few issues, um, you just respect what they want to do with the characters. Um, hopefully, they if they're going to take a character on a sharp right or a sharp left turn. They do it in a way that um, makes sense, is logical, and, um, you know, it might piss off people who are fans of that character or don't like the new interpretation, but as long as it makes some sense, I'm, I'm fine. That's, you know, this, this was Kieran's X-Men age, you know, before it was Whedon's X-Men age, you know, Grant Morrison's X-Men age, well now it's going to be Bendis' X-Men age, and whatever he wants to do with Scott going forward... You know, we'll see. I mean, we have seen previews for all new X-Men, and it looks like Scott's going to blow up the world. However, uh, sometimes, you know, previews, especially if they're selective in what they, they show, can be a little misleading. But that's neither here nor there. This continues to be a great series. Um, we have a little section where um, Kitty Pride and Emma Frost interact. And um, I don't know if they've always had a contentious relationship, but I know that um, at least since when Josh Whedon was writing um, Astonishing X-Men, um, at least at that point, they started their bickering, you know, both being teachers, you know, both hating each other. They have such different styles. I love to see them fight all the time. I really love seeing them interact. Um, Emma's a real jerk to her, um, true to character. And um, I think, I think that's, that was one of my favorite sections of this, of this issue. Um, and uh, I think, again, Emma Frost was a character that, that Gillen has done really well with, has really made her, um, you know, true to, true to character. She's, she's, um, she's only soft with Scott and with her students. Otherwise, she's true to who she was. She was a villain. She's still kind of a villain, you know, an anti-hero in a way. Um, and she didn't suddenly become like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. No, she is still jerk that she always was and if she if kitty pride is there she's gonna give it to her so um good on him um i don't think this was the the time for her to have for emma to have character growth so i'm glad that gillen kind of stayed true to the character that she was um <coughs> finally um we we have uh, magic um kind of seeming to be selling out colossus uh which i found a little odd because they seem to have made up at the end of uncanny uh, x-men the last issue where she um, took away his juggernaut powers and made him normal again after she taught him a lesson about what it meant to be damned. Um, I, I, so I don't, I'm not sure where they're going with that. And uh, and then Scott is communicating with someone through magic. Now, um, your your immediate thought, especially having just seen magic in this issue, is he's talking with magic. You know. However, I think Dylan could be throwing us a curveball and he could be talking to Pixie because Pixie is also a character that has magic within the X-Men and was loyal to Scott. So it could be um, Pixie he's communicating with. 
And if any of you, um, any of you viewers, know any other X Men characters that would be loyal to Scott that also have magic um, power sets, I'd be interesting to hear. Interested to hear what you think. Um, you, do you think he's communicating with magic, or do you think that he's communicating with um, Pixie or some other character? Um, there's also a great little section with Hope, and um, kind of leads to her. Um, riding to the five lights again, Gillen putting a putting a cap on uh, characters that he's touched and characters he's worked with, and so I think it continues to be a great issue, um, a great series. I mean, I'd give this issue a four and a half out of five stars. Um, you know, the the part with Scott being back and forth was a little off to me. Again, we'll see where he's going. Maybe he validates it, but in this particular issue, standing alone. You know, or standing on the shoulders of issue one and two, it, it seemed a little, little weak. And uh, you know, from he went from one minute wanting to be a martyr to then wanting to be a political prisoner. And the section with magic, uh, which also involves Storm, was uh, a little weird. I think they're setting up Storm because she's going to be leading some X Force team, which doesn't make sense because she didn't want to fight. She just joined Scott reluctantly, but who knows? Who knows? This is. Uh, we're just speculating, and, and it's it's tough. But um, you know, it wasn't as awesome as I found issue number two. But I still thought it was a great issue. So so I'm sticking with four and a half out of five. I'd like to hear what you think. Um, add your comments, um, you know, on YouTube, on Comic Pow, or Comic Vine, wherever you happen to watch this video. I'd really like to see what you guys think. Thanks.